Here are the two original batteries I had for VMAX, which are really heavy duty, um, military grade batteries, 155 amp hours. Um, I've changed my cabling to the biggest you can get welding cable 4 aught. The Xantrex manual recommended at least 1 aught, so I just went ahead and put 4 aught in. Um, I've got the charge controller coming in to the batteries from this line. First, the solar panels, which are outside on a wagon, which makes them purely portable, come in here. That's the positive. They're both black wires, a number eight I used, and uh, put the four, this on the duct tape to represent the positive for now. And they're coming through the wall through a box I have outside that I share with my generator hookup. I've got uh, grounding lines, grounding wires, number eight grounding wires, Grind, grounding the inverter here, and then also grounding the batteries here. This is where the negative of the inverters coming in, the positive of the inverter goes down into the what I consider the input of the batteries and the positive the charge controller is coming in here also. I've got a 200 amp um, fuse for the inverter and then a 50 amp fuse for the charge controller. I've added four deep cycle marine batteries. They're flooded. Uh, I got them from Walmart. Good price, $99 without tax. Seems to be a pretty decent battery. I have a lot of good reviews on them. Never start. Max. 29 DC. So I now have four of those. I put them on pieces of wood because they're uh, not as tall as the VMAX. So right now the system's working really good. Show you my solar panels. It's going to be a little hard to see for me because the sun's so bright. Getting some good, really good solar gain today. There is some few clouds, but it's not too bad. I have these mounted on my John Deere wagon using the U struts. I could put two more up here if I want, thinking about it. Um, just got them attached with long lag bolts here and then uh, galvanized screws here. I need to put nylon washers on these, but so far I haven't seen any about galvanic corrosion. These are my two Grape Solar 255 watt monocrystalline solar panels. This is a truly portable system. I can rotate it to whatever angle I want and turn it and track the sun. I'm retired so I don't mind coming out several times a day and reorienting. I have uh, 30 amp fuses on my, my um, panel connections. I've got them connected in series right now. I had them parallel initially, you'll see in my first video, and the re manufacturer recommended going series with them to get higher voltages. The, the charge control or the Odyssey charge controller works better with the higher voltage. I'm showing you where the solar panel 
come in and now you see the wires here I got a temporary splice here and I'm gonna probably put a box on the side of the house for that these go into the side of my connection for my generator which I hope to not use very often now and then the ground line ground wires that I showed you on the inside come out and go down and connect to the common grounding rod for the uh, house panel these are number uh, eight wires here and they go tie into number ten wires here to go to the solar panels This is a connection between uh, another temporary connection between number eight and number ten wires coming from the solar panels. A little bit about the uh, charge controller. This is an MPPT charge controller, which stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. It describes a process by means of which the solar module is always operated at the point of maximum possible power. Because the point, the maximum power can vary depending on the operating mode and the local conditions and it changes in the course of the day, the term tracking is used. Okay, I'm looking at this in the manual right now and reading it to you. Traditional controllers connect the solar module directly to the battery when recharging. This requires that the solar modules operate in a voltage range that is usually below the module's voltage uh, maximum point. In a 12 volt system, for example, the battery module may range from 10 to 15 volts DC but the modules maximum voltage is typically around 16 or 17 volts. This uh, module has a four stage battery charging algorithm for rapid, efficient and safe battery charging. It has a bulk charge stage, absorption stage, float stage. You can adjust the settings on the controller with this button you push it once it shows you the percentage of um, charge of the battery now there's inaccuracy here at times and you probably need a separate uh, voltage me uh, amp meter indicator because right now my batteries are only at 12.8 percent charge because of a cloud bank we have over and it's raining but you hold this button well Pushing again shows you the amps coming in from the solar panels. If you hold it for a few seconds, it allows you to cycle through the four ranges. This is for timing and dust to dawn setups. You hold it a few seconds to get it to go into the change mode and first two are dealing with timing and dust to dawn settings. Um, the third one allows you to set it for the type of battery you have, whether it's sealed, gel, uh, float, AGM. I've got them set on float. And then the last one allows you to control the amperage allowed coming in from the uh, batteries. Default is 50 amps. So that's a little bit more about the charge controller. I'm 
pulling about a thousand watts right now from my refrigerator and my toaster oven. Here's my uh, setup for my solar. I've got a surge protector here and this is this is an extension cord heavy duty coming from my um, outlet for my refrigerator. This is the refrigerator uh, cord and so I connect it into the panel which is tied into this surge protector. I have my watt meter here but if I want to take the refrigerator off solar I just unplug it here and then plug it into this this uh, extension cord here. So right now I'm running my refrigerator and I've been baking cookies which got up to a thousand watts or so of demand here. And I've run this extension cord underneath the refrigerator or the uh, panels underneath the cabinets and then down the heating duct into the basement and out to the garage and the clouds cause the input um, wattage to decrease so the inverter has kicked on one of its fans at least to uh, help bring the voltage back up above 12. When it drops below 12 the fans typically come on one and then two. It's a pure sine wave inverter. got 38 amps coming in from the solar panels so it's a pretty good draw and 13 volts going to the batteries pulling down to 12.6 at the inverter Before, when I had only two or four batteries, the uh, inverter would really be stressed by this kind of wattage draw, but the additional two and four batteries have really helped uh, reduce that demand.